help. Is it the flu? Is it COVID? Is it the gazillion other common childhood viruses out there? This video will have all the deets on the flu. Looking for tips on parenting development and to stay up to date on major pediatric health news? Don't forget to sign up for my newsletter here where I release weekly tips and updates to your inbox. I am Dr. Mona, a pediatrician and mom, and I help parents make sense of all of the noise out there so you can mindfully make the best choices for your child. Make sure to subscribe here to Peds Doc Talk TV to stay up to date on all of my content. And here we go. On this video, I'm talking about the flu, how we get it, the symptoms, how we can prevent it, treatment, and what to monitor when your kiddo has the flu. And stay tuned for how the heck you can differentiate it from other viruses that these kiddos can get. As a pediatrician, I've had my share of illnesses from my lovely patients. As a mom, I've had even more. COVID, hand, foot, and mouth, or random viruses, my immune system has been through it. But let me tell you, the flu is not fun. The last time I had it was in January, 2017, and it knocked me out. The worst body aches, like I felt like my bones were breaking in the middle of the night, chills, fever, and viral bronchitis for a month after. It wasn't pretty. I didn't take Tamiflu and stay tuned as to why I chose not to take it and when I recommend meds like Tamiflu. Flu season is typically fall until early spring, but the pandemic has sort of ruined this and now we have seen surges in spring or even the summer. Interestingly or not amazingly, Australia had their worst flu season in five years. Why do we care? Well, Australia is in a completely opposite seasonal pattern than the Northern Hemisphere. So what happens there with the flu can predict what happens for us. So we want to be prepared. And we will discuss my top five tips to staying prepared in flu season later to come. Flu is spread from person to person contact. When someone with the flu coughs or sneezes, the influenza virus gets into the air and people can inhale it through their nose or mouth or mucous membranes. The virus also can be spread when a person touches a contaminated hard surface, such as a door handle, and then they put their hands or fingers in their nose or mouth or rub their eyes. A kid with the flu or even an adult feels like they got hit by a truck. Symptoms come on suddenly. COVID reports have been more gradual, especially in kids, fever and a runny nose, whereas the flu hits you like a ton of bricks. You're fine and then all of a sudden, boom, sudden fever, chills, body aches, headache and sore throat, dry hacking coughs, stuffy nose, and in some instances, throwing up. In a pandemic, COVID is always a differential. So if you're unsure, get tested either at urgent care, your clinician's office, or home testing. Either way, you should be staying home if you're unwell. Symptoms can last three to five days and the fevers, body aches, and chills should subside with the cough lingering. Make sure to watch my video here on coughs and colds for more on when to be concerned about a cough and remedies, as well as my video on fevers here on when to evaluate a fever. Here are five tips to reducing our risk of getting the flu. And here how I said reducing risk. Completely eliminating risk is not possible with a viral illness, so we do the best we can to reduce it. Number one, stay home and keep kids home if they're sick. Example, don't medicate them and send them to school. If they're too cranky to be at school, they should be home and resting. If we all did this, we could reduce the spread of respiratory illnesses, including the flu. Number two, vary nutrition, including gut-friendly foods, such as plant-based foods. Number three, prioritize a full night of sleep for your kiddos, as it's helpful for their immune system to repair and rest. Number four, teach your child about hand washing. Ideally, we want them not to touch their eyes and mouth and nose, but listen, I'm a mom, I get it. Do your best. Do teach them that covering their mouth when they sneeze with their elbow, and washing their hands is ideal. Number five, get the flu vaccine if your child is six months and above. If your child is eight and younger, they will need two doses four weeks apart the first time they ever get the vaccine. The first vaccine primes their immune system and the second gives them immunity. Every season after that, they will only need to get one flu vaccine a season. If your child has had their ninth birthday, they would only need one a year, regardless if they've had the flu vaccine or not in the past. Some practices only do this two dose system under the age of nine for high risk children, but every practice I've worked with does this rule as well as many major hospitals. And I personally support it as well because it's not harmful and it can provide benefit. There are two ways to give the flu vaccine, an injection or nasal spray. I personally always recommend the injection over the nasal spray for better efficacy. But if your child is completely resistant, the spray is your best option. The nasal spray can only be given two years and up, 
whereas the injection can be given six months and up. The nasal spray is a live virus and the injection is not live. There's a list of contraindications to nasal spray vaccines linked here and in the caption. It takes about two weeks for protection, so I always recommend getting your annual flu shot by Halloween or finishing the two-dose series by Halloween for kiddos under nine getting the vaccine for the first time. I feel like mid-September to latest Halloween is your best window so that you can have the protection later into the spring months. Common side effects of the nasal flu vaccine are runny nose, nasal congestion, or headache. Vomiting, muscle ache, fever, sore throat, and cough can also happen as well, but are short-lived, not like the full-blown flu illness. You cannot get the flu from the flu vaccine. For more on the flu vaccine, visit the CDC website here. The flu vaccine is not 100% but it can reduce the risk of hospitalization and severity of illness similar to the COVID vaccine. And remember, there are many strains of the flu, kind of like the COVID virus, and they are always changing. Each year, a new flu vaccine is made to protect against three to four variants or viruses that are likely to cause disease in the upcoming flu season. So they are predicting the variants. They sometimes get it completely right, and sometimes they don't. But remember, some protection is always better than none. A 2014 study showed that flu vaccination reduced a child's risk of flu-related pediatric intensive care unit admissions by 74% during the flu seasons from 2010 to 2012. A 2017 study found that during 2009 to 2016, flu vaccines reduced the risk of flu-associated hospitalization among older adults by about 40% on average. Another study in 2017 looked at data from four flu seasons between 2010 and 2014, and it found that flu vaccination reduced the risk of flu-associated death by half, 51%, among children with underlying high-risk medical conditions, and by nearly two-thirds, 65%, among healthy children. So this vaccine is important. And besides that, as a clinician practicing for seven plus years, I see healthy kids get really sick from the flu. Some make a recovery and some don't. So I recommend the flu vaccine because it is safe and it adds protection for our kiddos and can also help protect those too young to get it. Children with underlying medical problems like conditions of the lung, like asthma, heart, kidney disease, an immune system condition, cancer, diabetes, some blood diseases, or conditions of the muscular or central nervous system are considered more high risk. If your child has an underlying medical condition, speak to your child's clinician about your child's symptoms and if they will need an antiviral prescription such as Tamiflu. Tamiflu is an antiviral medicine. It works by attacking the flu virus to keep it from multiplying in your body and by reducing the symptoms of the flu. It is recommended for kids under two who have the flu or children who are high risk of developing complications like those children I mentioned before. For kids not in these categories, you can choose to take Tamiflu. I actually don't routinely recommend Tamiflu as I do see some short-lived side effects, so I always weigh benefits and risks. Tamiflu can cause upset stomach, vomiting, and some parents have reported hallucinations after starting the medicine. Again, all short-lived, and one could argue that is this related to the fevers of the flu or the Tamiflu? Either way, have a discussion with your clinician to find out if it's best for your child. It's best to take it within 48 hours of symptoms for it to reduce the symptoms. And dosing is based on weight and it's taken for five days. So inquire about Tamiflu if your child has an underlying health condition, like I mentioned before, is younger than five years old, especially if less than two years old, has symptoms that are not improving in 48 hours and you're just worried about their condition, is in contact with others who are high risk for complications of the flu because then this medicine might be of benefit. In some cases, prophylactic or before you have symptoms, Tamiflu can be taken within seven days of exposure to a household contact. However, same benefit and risk scenario is discussed. When I had the flu, I did not take Tamiflu. I monitored my symptoms, rested, drank a lot of soup, had some crackers, I did not have an appetite, and had turmeric milk. I get the flu vaccine every year and I got it and I'm thankful that I was vaccinated because who knows what symptoms would have looked like if I didn't. Keep your child home until they're fever free and med free, which is fever reducing pain medicines for 24 hours. Keep them hydrated with their favorite liquids. Don't worry if they're not eating, but still offer foods and focus on liquids and soups for hydration. Remember to monitor your child for symptoms you would monitor for any virus, trouble breathing or unusually rapid breathing, bluish lips or face, retractions, watch this video about RSV for a demo on retractions, chest pain, inability to walk due to the body aches, dehydration, 
seizures, not interactive with you when they're awake at their baseline development level, or a really worsening cough. Don't forget to watch my videos on cough and cold and fever here on peds.talk TV to know how to manage these two very common symptoms that are part of the flu. Thank you for joining me. Make sure to get that flu vaccine for yourself and your kiddo who's over six months of age. If you have any questions about the flu, Tamiflu, the flu vaccine, make sure to comment below and also make sure to subscribe to peds.talk TV to stay up to date on all of my content here on my channel. And I'll talk to you next time.